And then Soundwave. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to get through this review. Oh my god, Soundwave. Soundwave looks more G1 than G1. <laughs> What's up, Alfonso Nation? It's Alfonso Peterman here, and welcome to another episode of my Rise of Bumblebee series. For those who are new to my channel, this is basically a series where I discuss all of the facts and falsehoods concerning the upcoming Bumblebee movie. This is episode number 16, and today I wanted to break down and review uh, the Bumblebee trailer 2 that was recently released by Paramount. This was one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Um, I'm not just saying that, and I'm going to get into why. Um, and also, the third trailer analysis should be coming soon. I want to do two separate videos for those. Uh, but before I do get started, uh, I do want to acknowledge real quick, uh, I have just, my channel has reached 6,000 subscribers, and I just cannot even tell you guys how grateful I am about that, and I am super, super grateful for the milestone that we just reached and the progress that we're making. This is showing me that not only is my channel growing, but you guys are liking my content. You guys are liking and watching and, and, and you guys are engaging more and my channel is go, uh, growing visibility. So I am extremely grateful for that. So thank you so much for 6K subscribers. I'm still debating what do I want to do for a special, um, but I am most, most grateful for the progress that we've made together. So thank you guys so much. Uh, so we're gonna get into this trailer. It is a two minute and 26 second trailer. There's quite a bit to go over. And so, you know, just to save time, we're gonna go straight into it. So uh, the trailer starts with a little small shot of Bumblebee uh, bending down looking at uh, Charlie. And then of course the official trailer logo starts. And so this is the beginning. I guess that first part was just like a little sneak peek of what you're gonna see in the trailer. Moving on, you see the beautiful shot, um, probably a drone shot, <laughs> of the Golden Gate Bridge in California. That is a very iconic landmark in uh, the United States. And then it transitions into uh, Charlie just living her life. She looks like she's driving, uh, not driving, but she's riding her, her, uh, her little motorbike on the pier or on a dock, and she's headed towards the end. So this might be just part of her casual life as usual. She's jamming some music, I'm assuming. <laughs> and then she heads over to this junkyard and that's whenever we see her, um, you know, looking at Bumblebee and kind of just like saying, whoa, look at this, 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 this beetle here. And she asks the uh, owner of the junkyard, is the beetle for sale? She takes a look at it, same shots from the first trailer, and he's like, it's yours, kid, happy birthday. So this is a confirmation right here that Bumblebee is in fact a birthday present that Charlie may have either purchased for herself or maybe her parents purchased for her. I'm gonna assume that she bought this um, as a uh, 18th birthday present. And so she drives it into the garage, she's taking a look at it, and as you can see, the part falls from the bottom, which kind of raises awareness to what happened, like she's, She's investigating that because it's like pretty strange. Why would a part, a huge part like that just fall to the bottom? And I'm personally thinking that this is Bumblebee purposely doing that to get her attention. Um, I don't think, I mean, he's a transformer. He can control the parts. I think he's purposely doing that just so she can get under there and see his face so he can introduce himself. So, so anyway, you see the same scene from the first trailer. His eyes light up, she's freaking out. I would have never handled that situation the way she did. <laughs> I would have lit, I would have lost it. I would have took off running. Cause you know, that would have actually scared me. Like that's an alien robot. My my car is like changing and it has eyes and big blue. It I, I would have lost it. But anyway, you get beautiful shot. I love the POV of like, you see his parts transforming and then through the parts, you can see her on the ground. I love that shot. And then we get an extended shot of the transformation showing the hand you know, rotating as he transforms. And then you see all the little gears and all the little parts inside of his hand. I loved it. It was very short-lived, but it was still very, very nice. And he stands up and he's looking up straight. And then when he looks down, his little antennas <laughs> pop up. And I just love that little part. Uh, he's like a like an actual bee. Like he looks like an actual bumblebee. And she's like, who are you? And so that was the beginning of, of the introduction between Charlie and Bumblebee. And then that's the shot of him jumping down. That's the Jeep that we got in the first trailer. 
and then we get um, we get a shot of the uh, one of Charlie's friends saying, "So you have no idea where you came from." So uh, this is uh, her talking about. She must have just broke the news to him, like, "Man, this thing is a robot, <laughs> and I have no idea where he came from." And so they're enjoying him, like, they're his shirt is off and her hands are in the air, both of them, and they're just they're just like enjoying Bumblebee. And you can basically see from this scene that. Um, She's obviously not driving. Her hands are not on the wheel or on the pedal. Uh, so they are just enjoying a ride. Bumblebee is driving them around. Uh, so this is the growing of the relationship between uh, Bumblebee and Charlie and of course Charlie's friend. Um, and then this transitions into like the cute scene again in the garage where Bumblebee is getting to know her and he's starting to get more acquainted with her. So you see him waving at her. You see him doing all these crazy things. And then it shows in the next scene uh you see that he was waving at the guy so this was probably before uh this was definitely before they actually was riding with their hands up uh this was where uh she probably called her friend over it's like oh my god come check this out my car transformed <laughs> and this is where he introduces himself to her friend and this this is one of my favorite just shots i just love this so much like oh my god i love this this is a shot of b and charlie in the forest um this is obviously probably before the chase scene where um where uh you get uh sector seven that chases him in the forest and uh you got you had blitzwing that was flying over the forest like area um yeah this is definitely before that where they're just hanging out getting acquainted with each other and um he's looking down at her and then you get a shot of hoover damn like wow oh my gosh that is total 2007 nostalgia like i can just see star screen transforming and shooting the <laughs> like it just reminds me of the first movie so this shows you that there's a lot of things that are brought in from the michael bay franchise storyline and i love this so you see john cena's character uh agent burns and all the sector seven folks um this is probably where they um discover the location of Bumblebee and decides to confront him and you're gonna see that confrontation at the end of the trailer where they shoot him and then he slams his hand down and all that but I'm jumping ahead this is just the scene where I guess they arrive and and they're very determined to find him and to attack him and so this is a this is a part where he's running from uh, the the sector 7 soldiers in the forest so this is obviously where he gets discovered um, and the vehicle shoots a missile and he literally dodges that missile and it hits a tree beside him. I love that shot. One of my favorite shots. The movie is very slick. He's very, uh, he's very fast. He's very skilled. You know, like with uh, Sentinel Prime, whenever Sentinel Prime shot at him, he knew how to turn around and flip over and dodge that bullet. He's really good at dodging bullets. He's very fast. Um, and then you get that shot where he leans down and looks at her. And then you got this really smooth transition. Uh, and he's transforming with this nice and clean transformation in like on the beach. And he, <laughs> his transformation just spits out all the dust. And she's like, ugh. And there he is patting her head. Just very cute. And I just love the way his jaw looks and his... His mouth just comes all the way up to the to the bottom of his eyes. He's just he's like a he's like a little puppy. He's just so cute. And um, Charlie's like, okay, yeah, this is great. All right, I'm good, you know. <laughs> and you can actually tell at the end of this, like be, like at the very end, before it transitions, you can see he's like almost laughing. Like <laughs> he's enjoying how much she's uncomfortable. He's, it's just so funny. So, anyways, it transitions to one of the most notable scenes of this entire. A trailer. This was the part that really blew people away. You got Shatter and you got Dropkick. And um, one thing I do notice is that uh, the helicopters that are flying, like that helicopter that's flying, doesn't really look like the helicopter that we see in the next shot where he's transforming. Uh, the helicopter that we see that's uh, uh, flying uh, right before they transform into cars is mostly blue. And if you jump back to the previous scene, he looks more like he's brownish or gray, like a metallic color. So um, those cars at the bottom might be two race cars, like just two random guys that's uh, racing in the desert. And then they scan those cars. And then that's what we get the shot, the epic shot, the first live action triple changing shot 
that was ever revealed to the public is right here where uh, Shatter and Dropkick transforms into their vehicle mode, such smooth landing, transition, and then right back into robot mode. Um, so the triple changers are here. And this is where the trailer really starts to get good. So you see Shatter and Dropkicks, and they're standing right before Sector 7, and Shatter is like, there's a war raging on our planet. And if this criminal isn't found, that war may find its way here. Which is a powerful thing, uh, that's a po po powerful engagement between Sector 7 and the Decepticons. So, so Shatter is basically informing Sector 7 of what's going on. Because I'm pretty sure at this stage in Sector 7's existence, they're not very familiar with Transformers. They might know a little bit about, you know, Megatron and him being captured uh, NBE-1. But that's all they know. They don't really know the story of what's going on in Cybertron. So this is where Shatter lets them know. There's a war raging on our planet. And if you don't deliver this guy unto us, that war is coming. And so this is basically the, the foreshadowing of all of the wars and the battles we've seen in the Michael Bay franchise. Like this is the beginning. This is what starts it all. So I like that this, this movie not only tells the story of Bumblebee, but also tells the story of how the war began on Earth. How did it come to Earth? Why is Earth even involved? Besides, you know, the all spark landing on it. Um, so, I, and I just love their, oh my God, I love their designs. Like I've never seen, uh, I, like I've never seen a live action turbo changer like the design you can see the turbines and you can see the, the like the, the Like the jet wings on the back, but then you get the grill of the car in the front. It's like what that's so cool So um, and then you get the first shot of Cybertron which literally This is the kind of Cybertron that if you just take war for Cybertron and fall of Cybertron and G1 and you just mash them together this is the compiled image of all of those different Cybertronian designs. This is this is amazing. I because you can actually see a circular uh, pattern at the top of Cybertron and even on the edge, which reminds me of Fall of Cybertron. And then you got the the, the large gaps in the planet and the fire showing how how uh, brutal the battle is, kind of like Fall of Cybertron. It really reminds me of Fall of Cybertron. Uh, but the bluish tint on the planet reminds me of War for Cybertron. So. I love it. And then you got a pod that is ejected, an escape pod ejecting from the planet. Um, I'm going to assume that this pod is a, a Decepticon, it is not Bumblebee. Um, I'm going to say that this is probably Shatter or Dropkick or both of them um, after they have been sent by the Decepticons to seek out Bumblebee because maybe during the war something happens where they learn that Bumblebee has something or Bumblebee is doing something um, that they need to stop or they need to acquire. There's something significant that brings them to Earth is why they need Bumblebee. So they had to leave Cybertron in search of Bumblebee. This is probably where they leave Cybertron. And then you see the shot where um, Charlie and Bumblebee is on the cliff overlooking that beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. And this is, this is interesting because usually you would see Bumblebee in his car mode because he's in public. I mean, you have people on the bridge driving. If I was driving on that bridge and I would just look up at the clip, I'm like, what is that moving yellow <laughs> robotic thing and this girl standing next to me? Like, that's kind of like out in the open. He's not really trying to be in disguise here. I would assume that because he's just like not in disguise, he's not in his car mode, this is obviously in public, the people on the bridge driving can definitely see him on the cliff. But he doesn't seem to care. He doesn't care that he's not in his disguise mode and this probably shows that something is on his mind that is more important than him being in disguise in that moment so it's probably after she triggers the optimus prime message and b learns of what's going on and how the war is is is, is raging on and so he gets the warning from optimus of what's fixing to happen so he's probably like really thinking about what's fixing to go down, which really makes him being in disguise irrelevant if, if the Decepticons are coming. And so you hear Charlie saying, is there somebody that can help you? Do you have a family? And this was this was the, this, the cutest thing ever. Um, and then you see him transforming, very smooth transformation. She's walking out. And this is the part that almost, like I almost started crying right here because it's like, 
I thought, if, like, if you look at my reaction, I thought he was talking about, like, I thought he was going to say Optimus, like, because technically, the Autobots is his family, that, you know, they are the, the, the uh, robots that fight alongside him, the Autobots are all a big family, but then he points to her, he says, you, like, you are my family now. So it's just, ah, oh, that was just such a cute scene and I just couldn't take it. I almost, I almost started crying. I was like, oh my gosh, you see, this is too much. Uh, <laughs> but this is, this is like, he was saying, I met you, you're my best friend, you're my family. You're gonna help me through this. And she says, oh, oh me. And he just smiles and he's like, yes. And I just, ah, oh. <sighs> moving on because this is, this is too cute. Um, <laughs> and this is every hero, you see him, uh, in his robot slash car mode, so this is definitely a chase scene, and you see the police car uh, that he is obviously after, and then he flips around and he lands on it. That was a beautiful scene, and you got Charlie inside of the vehicle alongside, uh, I think that's her friend. I think that's the guy that's always um, uh, riding along with her that met Bumblebee in the beginning and then you got the shot of the police car and he's landing on the police car a lot of speculation is saying that this is barricade um, and that is highly possible um, but there is a driver inside of the car so just keep that in mind and you can see the sheriff he has a, a, a sheriff cowboy hat on um, so this is probably, this is definitely like a, like a trooper. <laughs> um, but, you know, it could be a hologram. It could just be like what Barricade has always done in his car mode. And he just, you know, emits a hologram. Um, I personally hope this is not Barricade because I don't think that's a good design for him. I think, you know, the black and the white would be a lot better than the green. That's just my personal preference, but um, it could what it could very well be him there is no Decepticon insignia on him so uh, that's just a matter of time that we discover what, what what's really going on with that but whatever it is it's either the, uh, the, 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 the cop was chasing Bumblebee and Bumblebee ends up like getting in front of him and stopping him from chasing him um, or this is barricade and this is a fight scene so this could either be either one so anyways every hero has a beginning and you see b he's like slicing trees he's probably doing this to stop whoever is following him those those cars are shooting missiles at him those trees will probably just fall down and like uh cause a barrier between him so he's basically trying to escape um and and this is the money shot this is right here this is this is it this is the shot that everyone loved myself included every g1 fan every michael bay fan every transformer fan i don't know anybody who doesn't like this scene i have never met anybody yet um if you don't dm me i would like to know why because this is this right here is g1 in reincarnated like <laughs> this is amazing you got shockwave looking just like shockwave you got starscream you got shatter on the side i think that's who that is you got uh thunder uh skywarp i think that's skywarp and then you got probably Acid Storm. So you, you got, oh man, just, you, oh, this is the Seekers. The Seekers, the old Seekers on Cybertron. That's, that's amazing. This is an amazing shot. And then you hear a voiceover says they're calling an army. So the fact that they that that this was what the voiceover said while they showed this part of the part of the trailer, this shows that the Decepticons are calling an army. Um, and I would assume that army would be the army of Seekers. Um, so these are probably the leader of all the Seekers. And then when transition to the next scene, you see the other Seekers. The, the, like Almost like the... I would probably equate these guys to like the Vehicons in Transformers Prime. Just like the normal Decepticon flying jets. Um, normal foot soldiers. Not like special characters like Starscream or anybody like that per se. But... Um, I'd say Starscream and like Acid Storm and like Shatter. These are like the commanders of the the uh, Jet Army. But the army itself is what I guess the voiceover was saying. They are calling an army. So this is a POV of the the Subdecons, and they're all shooting in one centralized location. They're all shooting at one lower part compartment of Cybertron. And you get a really good shot of like the interior of Cybertron and the intensity of the battle. 
this was not a minute battle. There's a reason why Cybertron, the entire planet, was destroyed because of this battle. This is a huge battle, and you can see that, all the lasers. So you can see the purple lasers shooting outwards, so they're shooting towards the Autobots, and you can tell the Autobots are shooting back because of the yellow uh, lasers, or I guess bullets, you'll say, um, that's coming towards, towards the camera. And so this is probably the scene where the Seekers are headed towards Optimus Prime and the Autobots to, uh, I guess, charge them uh, <laughs> to really get the advantage. And then you got Agent Burns saying, I have seen firsthand these things really are. So he's probably talking about what these things in terms of the Decepticons, he has seen firsthand. This is probably after he met Shatter and Dropkick. He's like, guys, I have seen firsthand what these guys really are. Like these, this is real, you know? <laughs> like this is some real Transformers and this is a real battle. And of course you get the shot of Blitzwing uh, in the forest, probably the end of, I'm actually going to say this is the end of the chase scene, um, one of the chase scenes with Sector 7, where they're chasing Bumblebee and I guess he gets the advantage. So they call reinforcements and the reinforcements is Blitzwing. Blitzwing can see Bumblebee from a mile away, he's a jet, and Bumblebee uh, is laying on the on the ground in the forest so this is a shot before the chase scene I'm assuming and this is this is man this is the part where Optimus Prime uh, uh, this is the transmitted message that Optimus Prime sends to be saying Bumblebee there is only one way to end this war we must protect earth and its people I was like yes <laughs> Optimus Prime is back baby uh, and in the middle of this, this vocal transmission, you see Charlie looking very concerned. She's terrified. And then you got those same Seekers, I'm assuming, that we saw flying earlier. They fly right over Optimus Prime and he looks over at him. Um, and I'm assuming this is probably because they're not like sh flying towards him per se. Um, they might be chasing another Autobot Seeker or either they might be retreating from the battle. So this is probably where the Autobots might get some advantages and the Decepticons are flying away. Either way, beautiful scene. Love how Optimus Prime looks. And then Soundwave. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to get to this review. Oh my God, Soundwave. Soundwave looks more G1 than G1. <laughs> I'm sorry, he just looks more realistic. I mean, the parts are so metallic, and he, look at his eye and his huge shoulder cannon. And then freaking Ravage ejects, and he just starts charging at Optimus Prime. I like how Soundwave didn't even bother. He didn't even try to like attack Prime himself. He just sends his his uh, his little minions like Ravage, and I'm sure he has Laser Beak as well. So that's insane. Ravage looks crazy awesome, and of course you get that hologram of Optimus Prime. Um, and this is the one of the final scenes. I'm gonna say this is around the end of the movie where Bumblebee is at, at, he's at his last leg. This is the last straw. This is what makes, this is where Bumblebee the scout becomes Bumblebee the warrior. This is where his balls grow, <laughs> basically. So anyways, um, Sector 7 shoots this thing at him, right? And he's like trying to not be captured. They're trying to capture him. Agent Burns just throws Charlie down, like doesn't care. And I think that's probably what triggers Bumblebee's anger. See, he's probably, he's not really resisting. They, you know, he lets them shoot him. He's dragging, you know, he's not really fighting back. But if you notice, whenever Charlie is thrown on the ground by Agent Burns, you see B in the back, he's looking dead at what's happening. He's looking at what's happening. I think the fact that he, that, they just assaulted his best friend. That's what really triggered the anger. And in the next scene, he slams his hand on the ground. And you can see the anger in his eyes. He transforms and his battle mask comes on. And you already know. You already know <laughs> that when that battle mask comes on, it's going down. Y'all better start running. Just start running. When you see the battle mask come on, just take off running. You might as well. Because because after that, it's, it's, it's going to be hell. <laughs> and... Just as I said, he stands up very slowly. Like this is just his like his anger building. And Burns is like, and even Charlie is looking at him like, oh my god, I've never seen him so angry. I've never seen him like this. Everybody's like, whoa. And then there he goes. His cannon just transforms out of his hand and 
bang. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. No, I mean, I, I, oh my gosh, love it. This is where Bumblebee becomes the warrior. This is where he becomes the courageous scout and not just the scout. And so this is a shot of Cybertron, probably one of the ending shots of Cybertron. Um, after the flashback is ending, you see a seeker that's falling and you see a huge Cybertronian structure exploding. And if you look in the distance, you can see the buildings. They're all tattered. They're all withered away. They're literally like dying. Like it's, it's, it's literally like the, almost the end of the battle. So this might be at the very, like Cybertron's final moments. Um, and then you have Charlie hugging uh, Bumblebee and this looks like it's in the garage. This might be after all that went down and she's saying thank you so much. You got Shattered jumping off of this, this contraption and I guess he sees that Charlie is sitting down in this aircraft and he, I'm sorry, she, she and she. <laughs> it's, a, it's a girl versus girl. Shatter is a girl and Charlie's a girl. So Shatter jumps off the platform, transforms in midair, and then, it, and then initiates the weapon. She's looking dead at the weapon, freaking out. Um, and then you got the scene where, this is probably the end of where uh, Blitzwing transformed in midair. And this was very brutal. Like I'm pretty sure this is where B lost his voice box. I'm not sure. It does appear he's in his Jeep mode, so this is prior to the Volkswagen mode at the very beginning of the movie, I'm assuming. Probably before, yeah, this is before he even met Charlie. So this, this battle with Blitzwing was long before he even met Charlie in the beginning. And he just slams him on the ground and he's like still flying and he's dragging him on the ground and Bumblebee's like trying to grab his chest and trying to grab his neck. And then he slams his hand on the ground to try to stop the from stop them from like dragging him. But man, he's Blitzwing is powerful. <laughs> you know, he's got a lot of momentum, and so um, he transitions to a very interesting scene where B is on the ground and Charlie. And so this might be like the surrender moment where Bumblebee might either surrender or he might leave or Charlie. Something bad's happening, and so. It's, it's almost like they're saying their, their goodbyes or like their final moments or something because it's the way that they're reaching over at each other's hands and you got the Sector 7 closing in. So this is probably the end of where, the end of Charlie and Bumblebee. Um, the end of their relationship or the end of their, uh, you know, the time that they're gonna be together. Um, and Bumblebee's shaking. So this is definitely after a battle. He is, he is, he is tattered. He is shaking and there are sparks flying. Oh, actually, actually, now that I'm looking at it, Bumblebee looks like he's been tased. He looks like he's been shocked. Like, it looks like they shot him with some type of gun that electrocuted him, because I'm seeing little lightning parts in different areas, like different joints. So yeah, he's, he, he can't move, really. I don't think he can get up. And I, I also see smoke coming from his arm. So yeah, um, Sector 7 shot something at him and he can't move and I guess Charlie is saying, well if you're going to be down, I'm going to be down too, I'm, I'm, I'm going down with you. So this is probably what's going on here, that's, that's, in, that's interesting. I'm just noticing that as I'm reviewing it. And you actually hear the voiceover of Charlie saying this is how we stop them. And, and then after this, this part where he's laying on the ground with her, she says, you've got me and then the scene, the epic scene, probably where Dropkick dies. Bumblebee is like lunging at Dropkick. He just takes his whole body and just charges Dropkick. Um, and this is one of those scenes. Reminds me of uh, reminds me of a lot of scenes in Transformers, like the entire franchise. Reminds me of the first uh, movie where Sam is running and you got the cover fire. So Iron High is shooting, Ratchet is shooting. Reminds me of Dark of the Moon where Sam is running from Laserbeak. Oh man, it reminds me of a lot of different scenes where you get one person running and you got Transformers fighting in the background. So this is this is Michael Bay right here. <laughs> this is definitely Michael Bay. But uh, you hear Charlie says, you got me and I'm not going anywhere. So this is showing that the relationship between Charlie and Bumblebee is very strong. She's not going anywhere. She's dedicated to him. No matter what happens to him, she's gonna be there with him and vice versa. So this is the this is this the final scene where man they are fighting. This is probably where Dropkick is going to definitely die because <laughs> Bumblebee is kicking his tail. 
Yeah, I mean, I love the shot where Bone uses both of his feet and kicks him back, and then somehow regains his, his balance, grabs a boat, and just BAM! <laughs> just hits him with the boat. Um, that's a beautiful scene. And then, of course, as any Transformers movie, you gotta end it. After all that craziness, you gotta end it with something to laugh at, you know, like some, like a comedic uh, bit. And so this is where B is kind of looking through the dog hole uh, from the garage, and I guess his face pushes the door in because he's a robot. He's strong. He's trying to get acquainted with the home, and he transforms his chest to fit through the door. Like, this is so crazy. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. But this definitely shows how small he is in size. Like, he can fit in the house. He can almost stand up. Like, that's insane. I mean, in, in, the, in the first movie, he couldn't even fit in the house. Like, none of the Autobots could because they were bigger. You know, so this definitely shows how small he is in size. And he's just, like, messing everything up in the house. Like, she is like, oh, my God, I'm so screwed. So the parents are probably going to come home and see the entire house in a mess. Kind of like Sam when they were messing up the yard. <laughs> and he sits on the couch. And, of course, the couch breaks. <laughs> and his little antennas come up. I love it. So, yeah, you know, it's, it, this, is, this, is, this is a good... This is a good trailer. This is one of the best trailers that we've ever received. And uh, I see one of the top comments on this one say, says, so guys, we did it. We reached an actual good Transformers movie. So a lot of people um, are really enjoying what they are seeing. And I am a part of that group. I like this, this movie is gonna make you forget. And I don't wanna say this, but kind of, just given the fact that we got all these G1 iterations it's kind of going to make you forget what Michael Bay did or the things that we didn't like in the Michael Bay franchise. We're going to forget about that because we have something that we've been waiting for for so long and here it is. So, but for now, this is the review and the analysis, the breakdown of the second trailer for the Bombay movie. Hope you guys enjoyed this and if you did, drop a like on it. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I make new videos. And of course, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. I do, uh, I'm, I'm very active on both of those platforms. Not so much on Facebook. I might be deleting my Facebook very soon. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for 6K subscribers and for watching this video. And as always, my name is Alfonso and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out. Huh, <sighs> wow. Well, that's, that's done. <laughs> that was a long one. How long was that? 30 minutes. Wow.